Hi, and welcome to the Rotorex video tutorial. I'm Ben, and today I'm going to teach you how to choose the right supercharger size. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you know how to read a compressor map. If you don't, you can click up here to go to that video. So choosing the right compressor is all about matching airflow capabilities and pressure ratio to your setup and power target. For this tutorial, we're going to use an example where we're going to be boosting from 105 horsepower up to 150 horsepower. Quick note, this example is going to be in metric units using kilograms per second and temperatures in Kelvin. Step one is to determine how much air we need. Now rule of thumb is that one kilogram per second makes 1200 horsepower. So we're going to take our horsepower target of 150, divide that by 1200 and we're going to get 0.125 kilograms per second. So step two is going to be determining how much pressure ratio we need. Now, in an ideal world, it would basically just be the target horsepower divided by the original horsepower. But, to account for some losses, we're going to add 15% to that. So for this example, it's going to be 150 horsepower divided by 105 horsepower multiplied by 1.15, giving us a total of 1.64. It's important to note that this pressure ratio calculation is only valid for low to moderate boost levels with good intercooling. So far so good. So now that we have the airflow and the pressure ratio, we're going to look through the data sheets to find a compressor or supercharger that fits our requirements. So for this example, we can see that the C1560 is a good match, giving us good efficiency at 72% and we can achieve the pressure ratio and airflow target at around 115,000 RPM. So now that we've determined that the C1560 is the right choice for us, we can also determine the outlet temperature and the power consumption. The outlet temperature is going to help us in choosing the right size intercooler, minimizing pressure losses. To calculate the outlet temperature of the supercharger, we're going to use this formula. Now it's based on the pressure ratio, the inlet air temperature and the aerodynamic efficiency that we found in the compressor map. So in our example, we're going to use our pressure ratio of 1.64 an inlet temperature of 288 Kelvin or 15 degrees Celsius and the aerodynamic efficiency of 0.72 giving us an outlet temperature of 349 Kelvin or 76 degrees Celsius. To calculate the power consumption we're going to use basically the same formula but we're going to add in the mass flow. Keep in mind that this power consumption is purely aerodynamic meaning how efficient is the compressor at compressing the air. Mechanical losses need to be added to this. Luckily, our traction drive is about 97% efficient, but you can compare this to turbos or displacement type superchargers, which are typically 60 to 70% efficient. So to sum up, by matching airflow and pressure ratio requirements, we found that the C1560 was the right supercharger for us with good efficiency. Now, just to underline the importance of choosing the right size and getting good efficiency, Let's do an example now with the C1394 instead of the C1560. So we haven't changed our power target and we're still going for 0.125 kg per second at a pressure ratio of 1.64. But with the C1394, we'll only be at 64% efficiency at 68,000 RPM. So if we redo the outlet temperature and power calculations, we'll now have almost nine degrees hotter air and we'll be using one extra horsepower. So basically, by choosing the C1394, which is too big, we've got an increase of 12.5% in outlet temperature and power consumption. Additionally, this extra temperature will mean we'll have to remove some timing or add intercooling, increasing our pressure loss. And lastly, since we're too far left in the compressor map towards surge, part throttle drivability will be worsened because drivability and part throttle operation is all about what's left of this max operating point that we use for calculations. So to round off, hopefully you can see that choosing the right size compressor is not just about going for the biggest one. It's all about good efficiencies, good drivabilities, and getting the most out of your setup. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. We'll be having more videos like this with tech tips and product launches coming up. 